Well, this morning, Hurricane Ian is picking up strength as it moves north towards Georgia and the Carolinas. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connor and I'm Nettie Rampour. Glad to have you here with us. And the latest news from CBS is that they've confirmed at least six deaths in Florida due to Ian. It exited northeast Florida as a tropical storm, but then it got right into the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean, regaining strength over the Atlantic. Officials warn the danger is far from over now, so it's back to Hurricane Category One. Listen to North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. This storm can still be dangerous and even deadly. Heavy rains up to seven inches in some areas are likely to bring flooding. Landslides are a threat in our mountains and there's a chance of tornadoes statewide. President Biden has already declared an emergency in South Carolina and ordered federal assistance. We're going to send it over now to Evan. Evan, you've been tracking Ian and the fact that it's back to being a hurricane is pretty daunting. As soon as it passed over the Atlantic, it started gaining steam once again, and that is going to be the case as it uh, heads toward South Carolina and really North Carolina, getting the outer bands pretty strong right now. Sustained speeds at 85 miles per hour. That puts it back at category one hurricane strength. So this has now re-strengthened to a hurricane. We are going to be seeing it make landfall this afternoon. Charleston, Wilmington, both spots on the map and really the in between where we're going to see a lot of rain, possibility of six feet of storm surge in the area. And that uh, rain is also going to come along with the possibility of some thunderstorms and even tornadoes in the mix. So watch it as it makes landfall as a category one storm. It deteriorates from there, but we are going to be tracking its movement. Heavy rain, really intense wind gusts and wind speeds, those sustained speeds moving toward uh, 90 miles an hour. So still a lot of damage to go across the Carolinas. We will be monitoring this situation and of course the recovery effort across the state of Florida. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. In meantime, help is on the way as people in Florida recover from Hurricane Ian. Firefighters from San Diego and Chula Vista are there right now. They've been deployed. A team from the San Diego Humane Society also heading to Florida today. They're going to help in search and rescue operations for many of the animals. And more than a dozen local Red Cross volunteers are already there as well. The husband of missing Chula Vista mother Maya Miliete is expected back in court this morning. Earlier this week, Larry Miliete was found mentally competent to stand trial for her murder. That means criminal proceedings will now continue. Maya went missing in January of 2021 and her body has not been found. Today is the last day for the city of San Diego's moratorium on no fault evictions. This ban shielded tenants from being evicted as long as they were up to date on rent and abiding by the terms of their lease. One Linda Vista resident facing evictions foresees a new wave of homelessness, saying people have no affordable options. Well, you see a lot of tents on the street. That's where we are. I mean, that could be me. It could be anybody. It could be even people that are comfortable at home paying rent right now. Tomorrow you can, you can get a 30-day notice. Now, City Council President Sean Ela Rivera is working with the city's attorney's office to draft a new proposal to then update San Diego's tenant protection ordinance. This morning, San Diego's average gas price jumped again. It increased 12 cents overnight. It's now 632 for a gallon of regular. Some local gas stations are even higher. We spotted one in Hillcrest. Ooh. One of you, the viewers, sent me this, charging over $7.00. We're college students right now, so $7, that's ridiculous. When I, we were, we're from San Francisco, and even there, it never got this high. Oh, look at those prices. Experts say we will likely continue to experience these high prices for another few weeks until maintenance at refineries is completed, and then we switch over to the winter blend. Up 42 cents in three days. Right, and that's uh, six bucks for a 15-gallon tank. That's, uh, that's a lunch, right? Yeah. Californians are about to get some help with these high prices. The state will begin sending checks for its gas tax rebate in October. Depending on income, you could get between $200 and $1,050. The earliest payments are expected to arrive by direct deposit next Friday. 
all know San Diego is a proud military town, and this morning the annual honor flight is taking off. This is going to be the experience of a lifetime. That's how many describe it. CBS 8 is honored to be the only TV news crew from San Diego on honor flights. First, all Vietnam veteran flight. They did not get that welcome when they got home, right. and now things have certainly changed. Our Dana Marie McNichol live at San Diego International Airport, where so many are gathering there. Good morning. Good morning, Neto. Well, we are here where 85 veterans are gathered, anticipating the takeoff of their flight at 8 a.m. this morning. Now, Honor Flight is such a special weekend because it's 72 hours. It's very quick. They're visiting many different memorials um, from Arlington National Cemetery to the Vietnam War Memorial. And I have someone very special, Purple Heart recipient Terry, all the way from Atlanta this morning. What, what are you looking forward to most? Just, just seeing all the sights, you know, and being with my friends. You say being with your friends. Most of these men have served together in the same unit. Who do you know here and uh, you're, you're sharing with me? Um, one of my pilots, uh, Terry Anderson, was here. Uh, he was... Uh, I think he was in the helicopter that we crashed in. So we crashed, and then, uh, and then my last combat hop, I had a week to go in country, and I got shot in the back. So, uh, so I'm I'm truly blessed. Blessed to have you here today, too, to be able to experience this. And you have a very busy weekend ahead of you, so drink that coffee. You have so many of, of your friends and, and fellow veterans here with you. So stick with us here on CBS 8 this morning because we are going to be bringing you along with us as they head to their flight, taking off at 8 a.m. this morning. I'm Dana Marie McNichol. I'll send it back to you. Boy, yeah, he, put a, he put life in perspective there right. and what they're looking forward to and all the memories and, and mm -hmm. a reminder of the service, right, and the right. dedication of all our veterans. Really literally sacrificing their lives yeah. and uh, many people obviously putting their lives at risk and they get to gather mm -hmm. and share those stories this coming weekend. Exciting. Dana Marie, thank you. Thanks, we'll, Dana Marie. we'll see you again soon here. Oh, the sights they're going to see yeah. and yeah. all the stories that are going to come from that and uh, they'll, they should be able to take off okay, right? Yeah, I the think so. Up. The fog is, uh, it's been an issue for the last couple of days, but nothing that we don't work with for the entire month of May, June. Uh, this past summer, we saw it for pretty much the entire month of July, so they'll be okay. Uh, right now, visibility numbers are actually not even all that reduced compared to yesterday. Downtown San Diego was actually at nine miles of visibility compared to the perfect 10 that we look for. The trouble is up in Kearney Mesa all the way up through Carlsbad. We're at three and four miles. Uh, Brownfield, however, is at half a mile. So down south and even south of the international border, we are running into some trouble to start off the day. That means if you're driving down south, crossing the border, keep in mind that we are going to be seeing that reduced visibility while you are driving. Make sure to take it slower when you see the uh, dense fog. We see see a lot of crashes and collisions pop up on the screen uh, when we see dense fog in the forecast. And so early this morning, we see those clouds low down to the ground. By the afternoon, those clouds will lift a bit, but keep in mind that along the immediate coastline, it is going to be a constant push and pull. It'll keep our temperatures a little bit cooler in the 70s because of those clouds. Uh, as we head inland, those clouds are going to break apart really quickly. So into the next several hours, we'll see a lot of sunshine in the forecast, but the coast, some communities could work with those clouds all day long. It could be a constant back and forth. Mountains and deserts are going to see a lot of sunshine out there, and we're going to keep seeing those temperatures drop steadily into the upcoming weekend. So Saturday and Sunday are even cooler than this afternoon. If you say wanted even more cool fall like temperatures, well, you've got them for the weekend. Uh, next week, temperatures are going to start to climb once again, so keep that in mind moving forward that we will see a gradual climb next week, but it won't bring us to any heat advisory territory. It'll just bring us back to about average because the weekend really is going to be below average for most of us. Afternoon highs in the 70s along the coast, 71 for La Jolla, 79 for Mira Mesa, 85 for Santee and El Cajon. There are spots inland that could max out in the 70s like Vista this afternoon and then across uh, Saturday and Sunday we could see a lot more 70s in the forecast too, so cooling temperatures as well.